Hi, this is Marcus Curtis from Marcus Curtis Music, and this is the fourth video in our series, Use Any Behringer X32 for Studio Recording. Uh, so what we've been doing is we've been taking our Behringer X32 over here, and we've been using it in a home studio environment, basically. And in this video, what we're going to do is we're, we're going to expand the capabilities of our studio, and we're going to customize our studio. And we're going to start right now. One of the things we can do to expand the capabilities of our studio is to get uh, an external hard drive. And we can put all of our projects on the external hard drive and all the big software programs and all the uh, sample libraries we can put on our hard drive and it will save a ton of space. And uh, we can make the whole operation run smoother by having an external hard drive. And this particular one is powered through the USB cable and so it's probably about 5400 spindle speed. This hard drive is a Western Digital hard drive and it plugs in the wall, okay? And because it gets a power source from the wall, the spindle speed is actually quicker on this, higher on this. This is a 7200 spindle speed. And this is a four terabyte drive as well. But what this does is um, it has a higher data transfer rate because it operates at a higher spindle speed. It's about 15% faster than the other drive and uh, spend a little bit of extra money and get a faster transfer rate. Make sure that you plug it into a USB 3.0 or greater. Um, then that will give you great data transfer rates, great speed, and it won't slow down your system. Okay, our external drive is now plugged into our computer and when I hit Windows Explorer, you can see that it's Drive R. I've designated this letter and we'll get to that in a minute. Now the reason why I have an external drive is because I have a lot of files, like a sample libraries that take up hundreds of gigabytes of space. This is my project folder right here and that has all my recorded projects. There's about a hundred songs in there. That takes up a lot of space, a lot of tracks in there. I have video files in here here so I can have you know about two terabytes of space in here now my C drive is just an SSD drive and it's only a terabyte so there's no way that I can fit all the information that's on my backup drive on my external drive on my C drive so the reason for having a backup drive or an external drive is so that you can uh, record your projects and save them on your external drive and then you can just use the C drive to install various software programs and I've also installed some software programs to the R drive and if I change the letter the drive letter it's not going to work so if you plug this in and it says D or it says E and then you install programs into that drive and then you plug that drive in later on what happens if that drive letter changes is that none of those programs are going to work okay so you need to designate a drive letter and it's really not that hard to do all you do is you go down to your uh, start button right click and then we're going to go up to uh, computer no computer management will work and but let's do disk management it's kind of a shortcut to that area and uh, we can see our drives listed here. Here's the R drive, okay? So to change the drive letter, it's real simple. I'm gonna highlight the drive, I'm gonna right click, and then we're gonna go down to change drive letter. And now this comes, this little box comes up, and I click to change, and now I can select my letter. If I wanted to change this to E example, I just uh, click on E. So any available letter will open up, hit okay, hit yes, hit yes again, and now, my drive has changed to E. Okay, so if I go into the former Explorer program, I can close that out. It also says E, but uh, so now my drive letter is E. Now, let's say I want to designate it R again. It's the same step. Just go to uh, uh, the Start button, right click, go up to uh, Disk Management. Once Disk Management opens up, we're going to highlight the E drive. We're going to right click on it. We're going to go to Change Drive Letter. Once that comes up, we're going to go to Change. And we're going to click on uh, R, which is what we had it before. All my programs are installed to the R drive. So it will only the computer will only see the R drive when it's trying to run the program. So we need to change it back to R. Click OK. Hit Yes again and yes again and now our drive is back to being R and if I want to I can even highlight the drive right click and go down to rename 
and in rename, I'm just going to rename this recording. So this is my recording drive. And let's go ahead and close this out. And let's go ahead and open it up again. And there it is. So now what I need to do is go to Cakewalk. I'm going to close this out. Okay, so now we're going to bring up Cakewalk. And now that we've brought up Cakewalk, we're going to go over to Edit, then Preferences. In Preferences, we're going to go down to where it says Folder Locations, which we're already here. And we see that our project files is C. So we're going to go ahead and hit on this button. And we're going to go down to our R drive, which is right here. Here's the R drive. I'm going to hit on that. And then we're going to click on Cakewalk Projects. And now whenever I make a new project, it's going to save it within this folder right here. Click OK. And so now all the projects that I work with are going to be on my external drive. Same thing with exporting a file. If I want that file to go to the external drive, OK, we're going to highlight that. I'm going to go down to our drive. And then we're just going to go down to our Cakewalk Projects folder. And we'll just have our exported file right in there. Okay, you can change the way that Cakewalk looks and you can change the theme within Cakewalk. And now if you've downloaded Cakewalk by BandLab, you also had the option of downloading the Cakewalk theme editor. And with Cakewalk's theme editor, you can basically create your own theme. So um, we're not gonna cover how to do this right now. I've covered this in other videos. Uh, but to change the theme, it's really simple. We're going to bring up Cakewalk. And this is the default theme that comes with Cakewalk. And you can widen these strips if you want to. Just go down to where it has strips. Widen all strips. And this is what the strips look like when they're widened. I like the uh, narrow strips because it saves on real estate. If I hit D, which is dock on the keyboard, it's going to take the screen away. And here's our tracks uh, view here. And uh, you can see the way this theme looks. So we're going to change this theme. We'll go up to edit, and then we'll come down to preferences. Okay. And so we go down to where it says, scroll down to the word themes. And I'm going to highlight that. Okay. So once the theme uh, window opens, you can see Tungsten is the name of the default theme that Cakewalk comes with. So if I click on this and go to Mercury, Mercury was the default theme when Cakewalk was called uh, Sonar. Back when Roland changed the name of Cakewalk to Sonar and came up with the Sonar layout, this was the default theme that came with it. And just hit apply, and now you'll see that the entire theme more or less changes. We'll close this for now. And uh, you can see that the buttons all change up in here. You have this more of a turquoise color. And if you hit D on the keyboard, you can see that our mixing board has changed as well. And when you want to change, like for example, all the drums run to a bus, and we can go over here and highlight the color of the drum bus, you can see that the colors look different in this theme. I kind of like this theme. This is one of my favorite theme themes. I use this one more than any other one. Okay, so we're going to go back on default here. And let's go change our theme again. So we're going to go over to Edit, and we're going to go down to Preferences. And our theme window comes up. Now I have other themes that were made uh, for Cakewalk. Okay, and you can see the names of them right here. Okay, and I'll give you these themes if you want. I've got these from the Cakewalk uh, website. Various people in the forums have made these themes and they shared them. I'll put them in a folder and I'll link to them in the uh, uh, in, in the uh, video. And you can download these themes if you want to. You're going to need the theme editor to install them. Okay, so what do some of these themes look like? Okay, let's try blue th blue uh, flare. Here's a blue flare. Let's give that, a, give that a shot. Get a little warning message here. It might be incompatible, but it's not really incompatible. It works pretty well. So this theme's a little bit different. When we pull up the mixing board, this is what the theme looks like. Okay, let's try another theme. Um, we're gonna go down to preference. And this theme, See what we really got one to do. How about what does stealth look like? Well, 
That's almost like Reaper, isn't it? So let's go ahead and hit apply on that. Hit yes. And there we go. Here's our stealth look. And here's our tracks painting look. Kind of dark for me, a little bit too dark. So let's go to edit again. And we're going to go to preferences. It's not a bad theme, though. Um, let's see. Let's try purple satin. Okay. Yeah, that's not bad. A little bit interesting, right? Let's do one more theme. Let's do... Um, Boston Flowers. That's almost like the other theme. I like I like the turquoise buttons better, though. Uh, let's see what else we got. I like the green play buttons. A nice touch. Uh, let's see. Um, what's the stealth one look like? We did stealth already. Let's try titanium. Well, that's sort of interesting. Yes. So here we go. Titanium. All right, so there you go. That's themes in Cakewalk. Uh, so I will leave those themes in the uh, video description, and you can uh, click on it and download the themes. Okay, one way to expand the function of your DAW application is by adding plugins. There are thousands of plugins out there, and there's some that you pay for, and there's some that are free. And the free ones, half of them are not even worth having. I'd say about 70% of them are not worth having. Uh, but there are some really good free ones out there that are, that will expand the capabilities of your DAW. So it doesn't matter what you're using. So if you're using Waveform, they'll work inside Waveform. And remember that Waveform will work with a Mac, and it'll work with... Uh, the Linux systems, the computer systems, well, these plugins will work with those uh, operating systems as well. And uh, we have Cakewalk as well. So these plugins will work in any DAW application. And for our example today, we're going to use Cakewalk, okay? And we're going to start by opening up a uh, project. And let's go to New Project, and we're going to just do an empty project. And once that project loads, we're just going to go ahead and insert you know, about three audio tracks. Then we're going to close the browser by hitting B, and then we're going to close the inspector by hitting I. Then I'm going to hit D on the keyboard to open up the dock, and then we're going to go ahead and pull this up so you can see the mixing board a little bit better. Okay, so here's the three tracks that we've added. Now, to understand what some of these plugins do, we have to understand, first of all, signal flow. And in our mixer on Cakewalk, the signal flow starts from the top and goes to the bottom. And the first thing we run into here is this gain knob. And this gain knob is basically a volume knob for the audio track that has been recorded. It doesn't work if you're recording audio, only works with the audio you're playing back. So if it's too loud, you wanna take it down, you just kind of do that. If it's, if it's not loud enough, you wanna go up, then you do this. If you click it twice, it goes back to zero. And the next thing we run into is the pro channel. This whole section here is the pro channel. And if you hit this little arrow, the pro channel comes out and you have a, a list of effects over here. To arm the pro channel, you just click that power button and it arms the whole pro channel. You can turn individual effects on and off within the pro channel itself. So this EQ, for example, uh, you can't delete this EQ or remove it. Other effects you can, like if you want to remove this tube, just go ahead and click remove and it'll remove the effect. The EQ more or less stays in place. It's a fly out EQ, so if you hit this, it flies out and you can make the adjustments from right in here. Okay, let's go ahead and pull this up. And you can see as you make these adjustments, okay, it displays over here. Okay, so this EQ is a pretty good EQ. You have four bands, a high shelf, a low shelf, and then you have four types. You have hybrid, pure, E-type, and G-type. And it also has a gloss function in it as well. It's not a bad EQ. It's actually pretty good. So, um, you know, if you're going to get EQ plugins, remember that you already have an EQ that's pretty decent so if you're gonna get an EQ get something better than what you already have here okay now in addition to this you can add other modules or replace other modules so if we open up our compressor okay let's say we're gonna 
go ahead and right click and then we're going to go to uh, replace module well, I can replace it with different types of uh, compressors here's a, a CA2A a famous compressor modeled after a famous compressor anyway and then you have all kinds of things you can put in here. here's reverb and here's uh, another type of uh, tube saturation plug-in right and then over here we have style effects let's say we want to do like a depth one okay that depth style effect is added down here so you can basically customize the pro channel right in here now you can also save everything once you get it set up in a preset so you come over to the preset right here and you click on that and all the presets that you saved will be in here okay so you can like here's one I've made uh, for snare adding punch to a snare click on that open that up and here's my snare punch preset really basic just a compressor and a little bit of EQ okay so um, if you want these presets that I've made down in here you go click on C drive and we'll click on cakewalk content and let's click click on cakewalk core and you'll see a folder in here that says pro channel presets Here's all the presets that we just opened up. What I'm going to do is take the presets that I've made and I'm going to put them in the same folder that I'm putting the themes in. That way, when you download the themes, you can get the preset and you just cut and paste the presets into this Pro Channel folder and you'll have those presets. So I'm going to offer that to you and I'll leave a link in the description of the video. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close this out now going back to this. Now, the signal leaves from the Pro Channel, then it goes into the effects bend. Then from the effects pen, it goes to the send. Then from the send, it goes down to our mute solo and record function. And from here, it goes to the pan. Then ultimately the fader. Then ultimately out to the master. And when it's routed to the master, here's our master bus. So the signal actually goes all the way up to the gain right here. And it goes down accordingly. Now, if we wanted to change the routing to this, let's say we click on this and let's go to, well, let's add another bus here insert a bus this is bus D say we want the signal to go to bus D we can uh, click on this and go to bus D now the signal is going to leave and it's going to go all the way up to the gain and the pan of bus D and it's work its way down as well and you have a pro channel over here as well on all the buses okay and then from here it's routed to the master which means it's going to go all the way up here and work its way down and then when it gets down to the bottom, you'll see here's the output of our Behringer mixer. So I'll just pull this over so you can see it. So here's our four outputs of our Behringer mixer. So when it gets to the master, everything goes through the master and out into however we have this configured. Okay, so that's the way signal routing works. So if you want to put an effects into the... Um, uh, Pro Channel, what you would do is right click and there's a special module for that and that module is called Effects Chain. So we bring open Effects Chain here and now we can add effects that we would add in here in, into the Effects Pen. We can now add them in here into the, into the Pro Channel. So let's say we want to add a guitar amp. And our first effect I'm going to show you that's pretty good. And there's a VST2 version and a VST3 version is this one called emissary it's pretty decent guitar amp I, I like it you know and uh, you can change the tubes in the back and change the tube configuration okay and um, this little thing takes you to the back okay and then in addition to that we can add a cabinet so if we click on um, adding effects here we're gonna go up to insert audio effect and these, uh, this amp comes with this uh, IR section of cabinets, and we can add the IR section. Now, this is worth downloading. This would be one, if you're a guitar player, you might want this. If you are using the Wave uh, uh, Free program, Waveform Free program, actually, if you're using this and it doesn't come with any guitar amps, so you might want to get that just because you might want a guitar amp in there. And there's some other ones we'll talk about. But the cool thing about this uh cabinet is that you can use this with any amp you don't have to use it with the uh, ignite emissary amp it'll work with any other amp you find that you want to put in the effects chain then once you have this loaded you can position this anywhere you want in the pro channel 
Okay, another thing worth mentioning is that all of these Pro Channel modules uh, have presets to them, and to access them, you just come over to, like, here's the compressor presets right here, okay? And then if you want EQ presets to right here, okay, say you want a, a good acoustic preset, you can go sample through these and find a, an acoustic preset. If you want to make some final adjustments, you can just go in and make your final adjustments here, okay? Now, um, this is in addition to the presets that you find in here. So as you load modules, you can change the presets around. So um, now let's talk about gain staging really quick, uh, because the first plugin I'm going to show you relates to uh, uh, gain staging. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close our pro channel here. Now, um, when we do our gain staging, what we're doing is uh, we're adjusting the volume of the signal as it goes through this little maze here, as it goes through this over this channel strip over to the bus, over to the master, and out. Lots of times through the stages of the path, it'll boost the signal. The first plugin I'm going to show you is actually from, um, let's see, I'll just pull it up here. It's from uh, Blue Cat Audio, and it's this plugin right here. Uh, so, uh, Blue Cat's Gain 3. There's a mono and a stereo. We're just going to do the mono one real quick. And there it is. Okay, so let's say, for example, that you are uh, adjusting the signal and it's too loud and you bring the signal down to get it to the volume you need it to be. Then it goes through all this stuff and uh, it goes all the way down and it gets to the effects band. You've adjusted this according to the meter down here, right? Well, let's say it goes through all of this stuff and it increases in volume. Maybe you added some EQ, you got guitar amps and stuff, okay? So now you need to turn it down. You don't want to turn it down from here. You've already adjusted at this point. So you need another stage of the signal to adjust it from there. So this is what this does. And all you would do is come over here and you would reduce the volume to match what you need to register over here in the meter, okay? So this is a great handy plugin. Cakewalk doesn't have anything like this. So I would recommend you go over to Blue Cat and get this. This is free, doesn't cost anything. Um, this is one solution to gain staging. Now you don't want to use the fader for gain staging. The faders are primarily, you want to keep them at zero because you want to use these in relation to the other tracks. You use the faders to blend the tracks together and you use the faders for automation. You don't use the faders for gain staging. You'll get a better mix that way. So this is where this plugin will really come into play here. Okay. Now there are other uh, things you can get. I'll show you a couple more options here. Um, this is a great plugin. I've used it, and it takes a very little um, uh, CPU cycles. But another option would be if you want meters, go down to VST3, and let's see where are we here. Oh, okay, MV Meter 2 by TB Pro Audio. This is also another free plugin. It will actually, and they're linked together as you can see. This is a stereo. If you got a mono, um, you can close this. You can adjust the size as well. Okay, if you're doing side chain uh, compression or uh, left and right, mid side, so if you're doing some sort of side chain compression, adjust right there. Uh, this will. Um, make it if you've got a mono you can do like a mono um, meter if you're doing stereo then you can go back to stereo you can change the way this looks so there's white there's classic and there is black and then there is retro and there is deluxe this plugin is by Sonokis and it's called 3G okay so let's take a closer look at this now you see the same type of meter that we have over here okay and so we have um, a fader so we can adjust the volume using the fader right here and double click it returns it back to zero now if we want to make this a fine adjustment we click on fine and it spreads it out so we can adjust just a little bit if we need that we can really fine tune it once again, double click will bring it back to zero. This will mute the plugin. This will bypass the plugin. And then this will flip the polarity. What's cool about this also is that it has a trim control so that you can adjust the volume that way as well. 
And in addition to that, we have a pan. So if it's more to the left than you want it to be, you can just kind of move it over to the right and adjust the volume that way. And if you need to increase the volume, you can also do that. Um, the other cool thing is that as it registers, the high peaks will be placed over here, left and right. Okay. And over here where it says free G, you click there and you get in the settings and you can adjust your trim range, the fine range, the default mode, uh, pan laws, all this kind of stuff. So, and then you close it out to go back to the main meter. Really great plugin, really easy to use. Okay, another good plugin uh, that you're probably going to want to get, let's see if I can find it in VST3 here, is Valhalla Supermassive. This is an exceptional reverb. This is this is a great reverb. It's worth having. It's worth downloading. And you'll find that you'll probably use this more than any reverb that's in Cakewalk. And it's free. It's also free. Uh, Valhalla has about three different plugins that are free. And there's some that you pay for. But this is like one of the best reverb units you're going to come across. It's really good. It's Another plugin worth having is by Six Sample. And it's called Delay. And this, this is the best delay you're going to find anywhere, really. Uh, and it's hard to really believe it's free. Now, if you've noticed, I'm not taking a lot of time to describe the features of some of these plugins because there's lots of videos on the Internet that already cover this. I'm just trying to save time to bunch all these plugins together so you'll know what to go get. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll leave all the links to where you can go get these things. But this is definitely uh, the best delay I have in my arsenal. And it's really, really good. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'll show you some more that's worth having. Another one that's worth getting is... These are all good, but I'm trying to show you the best ones. Uh, Slate Digital. And this is called Fresh Air. This is a... Um, an exciter. If you know what an exciter does, if you've ever been in the recording studios, and this is modeled after the old exciters that were rack mount hardware. And it's just real simple. You have two knobs, and if you want to, you can hook these two knobs together. So when you adjust one, it adjusts the other. But really, it's an effect of the high end. This is the high end, and this is the mid to high. And it really adds uh, a lot of air to the top of your... Um, uh, signal. Now you'd use this on a master bus or you can use this on an acoustic guitar track. It sounds great with vocals. So, and it's free as well. So it's another one that's worth getting. So at some point you're going to want an analyzer. Okay. So another good effect for that would be by Vox and Go. And here it is. It's called Span. Okay. And Span is um, basically uh, uh, an analyzer it basically gives you the overall signal. If we go over here, you can kind of see. Uh, use it on a master bus when you when when you're mastering. It gives you the overall signal here. Now you can change the color. You see, this is a different color. You just go over here where it says blue, and if you want to go gray, there's there's the color you see in there. Okay. Now also, there's various colors you can choose from, as you can see. So you can change it to just about any color you can think you want. All right, so um, this is great for mastering. You, you probably put this on the master bus to get an uh, overall view of what's going on. Okay. Another good plugin to have would be a uh, tape emulator. Now, Cakewalk does come with a tape emulator. Let's go ahead and delete this, um, and I'll show you the emulator. And here's our tape emulator. Now, it, it basically emulates a tape machine, a reel-to-reel, and they have a natural type of compression. All tape has a natural type of compression to it. And some people like that sound. And also you can adjust the noise that you would hear on a tape. You can add a little bit of that noise. And people like that tone, believe it or not. And then you have your recording level and then your playback level here. And um, it's a basic um, tape deck emulation. And it does an okay job. It's not really a bad plugin, but there's a better one that you can get. And uh, this one is Chow Tape Module. It has a lot more features and it does a lot more stuff. And I'm not going to take the time to go into this because there's, like I say, videos that explain this whole thing on YouTube. But, um, you know, this would be one that you might want 
uh, if you want that type of natural compression that you find with uh, tape decks. Okay. So also in, in the modules, there is um, a couple of different tube uh, emulations. Okay. So we have soft tube, which is um, a, a, a tube saturator plugin. Okay. And it's okay. It does all right. Um, there are better ones out there that are free. Uh, let's cover a couple of these. There's a couple of really good saturation plugins that you should know about. Um, and the first one is going to be this one. The uh, same one that brought you the MV meters uh, is G-Satch. And this is a great emulation for like a, a saturation plugin, kind of like the feel of a tube. Um, and again, I'm not going to go into detail, but it's, it's a pretty cool plugin. Uh, another one would be from Analog Obsession, Chan V. This is a great um, channel strip plugin. It comes with a mic preamp type thing that emulates uh, a channel strip, and then you have a de built in right here. Then you have an EQ, and then you have a compressor, and then you have a limiter, and finally you have a tape saturation. So it has all these things built into one plugin. It's pretty cool, actually. It does some things that are that's pretty interesting. Uh, that would be another one. So the question remains, where do you go to get all the plugins that are listed in this video? Now, I could leave a bunch of links in the video description, but I think I have a better way here. Now, on my website, Marcus Curtis Music, there is a section called the Ultimate Free Software List. Everything in this list is uh, all the free plugins that I've used uh, and have tested and have downloaded and I can verify to be decent plugins. Okay, so for example, if you go down to the free dynamic and mastering plugins and just click on that, the page is going to load. And once the page loads, you can go down and you can see all the free plugins that I have used and tested. And there are a lot of good ones here. So Fresh Air, we've talked about Fresh Air. All you got to do is click down here and you're taken right to the Fresh Air page and you can just set it up and download Fresh Air. Um, here is the uh, GSAT uh, plugin I talked about earlier. Okay, so you can go grab that one. Here is the uh, 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 tape modeler. Okay, and I've arranged this in such a way to where you see the tabs up top. Okay, and all you got to do is click on the tab for the um, website and you can go down. Here's Blue, here's Blue Cat Audio. Okay. And here is here's the, um, the the gain knobs. This is a stereo one, and also in Blue Cat you'll find these guitar amps are are pretty decent. Okay, if you're using waveform and you want some guitar amps. Also, um, here's a free G. Okay, and uh, so the plugins that I've mentioned they're all here, and you can get them uh, right at the website. Now I have this divided. Uh, by category, and there are other plugins I've not really talked about, but uh, you can just go down through here and look at all the plugins and decide which ones you want, which ones you want to use, and there are a bunch of them. Thank you for watching, and we finally reached the point where in the next video we're going to start recording projects. We're going to start laying down tracks, and uh, we're going to do a couple different projects, and I'm going to show you how I record acoustic guitars, bass, drums, how I do all of that stuff, okay? And uh, we're going to use the Behringer X32 to do everything. And then uh, once we get all the tracks recorded, we're going to uh, start mixing some of those projects. So we have a few more videos left in this series. Now I would ask that you like and subscribe. When you like, it helps the YouTube algorithm, gets this video out to more people to see this information. But also, it encourages me to make more of these videos. Also, if, if you subscribe, you'll see when other videos come up and you'll be notified when those videos are released. But as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And we'll see you in the next video.